everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and I'm back to work on my dad's journal a little bit more and talk to you some more about him. And just so that you know, I don't plan this out ahead of time, like I didn't plan what I was going to say about my mom. And there were some things that were really important that I forgot to say about her, so you'd think that I would learn from that and I'd plan this out too. But I kind of feel like it should be like a conversation. And if I was sitting at your house or you came over here and we were just doing crafts together, I wouldn't like plan out what I'm going to say. I just, you know, we would just be talking and stuff. And so that's kind of how I want to do this. So my apologies to anybody involved if I forget something really important. Um, but I'm just like going with the flow. So anyway, so where I left off last time was that we moved up to Santa Clara and my dad was really involved in, um, in church stuff, especially like board of trustees. He was also a worship leader and, um, I mean, not like worship leaders are now, but like at our church, the worship leader would, um, you know, stand in the front at the pulpit and you know, do the call to worship and give the announcements and lead the singing was the main thing. And my dad has a very, very strong voice. And so they would turn off the microphone when he was leading singing and you could hear him perfectly over the entire congregation. And you know, whenever we traveled and we were visiting a church, because whenever we traveled, we still went to church, um, just wherever we were, and people would always turn around and look at him and go, wow, you have a really good voice and stuff like that. So he has a really good voice and he likes to sing. I'm kind of getting to where we are now, not so much in the past, but um, one of the things that he's taken up in, I don't know if you would call it retirement. He's retired now um, as of like a year or two ago, but uh, he retired earlier and then built his business back up. So. Um, anyway, in his in that second business building time, he started doing barbershop quartet, and I think that was just really good for him because he's he's really good at it, and he loves to sing, and he's like I said, he's got a very strong voice. So anyway, so going back to where we were, um, he was one of the worship leaders at the church. I think there were two of them, and then on Sunday evenings too, he would lead worship and Sunday evenings were less formal. Um, the pastor wouldn't preach from the pulpit. He would just bring a little podium up and same thing with the song leaders. They would um, just lead songs from the floor and sometimes they would choose the songs ahead of time and sometimes they would let people in the congregation choose songs. I think it kind of depended on who the pianist was because some pianists can handle that, some can't. I mean like if you want me to play the piano in church, you're gonna to have to give me the songs like three or four weeks ahead of time so I can practice them. <laughs> or you won't, I could pluck them out with one finger on the spur of the moment, but you know, so it's like, you know, it kind of depended on who was, who was playing the piano. I mean, they were all better than that, than what I'm saying, because that's me. Um, here we go, I think that helps, doesn't it? To bring some color to that. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'm gonna put that there. Um, so yeah, so he did that and he was, you know, also involved in different committees. I'm sure he was involved in mission oriented things, um, and stuff, but anyway, so, um, I think I was like seven or so. I think we had been in Santa Clara for maybe a couple years and we had a visitor to our church, Dick Hillis who um, founded Overseas Crusades, um, which is now called OCI. And he had been a missionary with China Inland Mission, but then when China was closed to missionaries, um, he started Overseas Crusades. Or he may have started before then, I'm not sure. Anyway, he started Overseas Crusades. And um, he was, preaching at our church one Sunday and said that they needed somebody on the staff, I think. And my dad felt like God was calling him to do that. So he talked to Dick and he ended up leaving his job at Lockheed and um, 
going and working for Overseas Crusades at the Home Office, which at that time was in Palo Alto. And my dad was, I don't know if this was his position the whole time he was there, I think it was, uh, the Director of Administrative Services. And I'm not exactly sure what all that entailed, um, but I think he was like in charge of the secretarial pool and probably pretty much anything else that was... Sorry, that's my alarm going off. Um, anything else that was administrative. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I got to go up to the office a few times up in Palo Alto. I think it was in an old house because there were, I remember these stairs that we called the secret stairs, that, you know, all of us kids that were in the OC home office staff family kind of thing. Um, we called them the secret stairs. They were probably like servant stairs up to the kitchen or something. I don't know. And... Um, Anyway, so I'd go up and I'd play some, you know, I'd go up and down the stairs and I would, you know, make up little stories and stuff like that. And then um, somebody like Bud Schaefer or someone would say, hey, would you like to help me with something? And so I'd get to go stuff envelopes or something, which was which was really fun. I mean, when I say get to do it, it, it really was like fun to do. I, I enjoyed it and always whoever it was, and I think it usually was Bud Schaefer, um, would call me into his office and sit and talk to me for a while about like, what did I want to do with my life? And I was like, I don't know, seven or eight, <laughs> not very old, you know, but it was like those people got me really thinking about what I wanted to do. I mean, seriously thinking, not just like, oh, I want to be a teacher when I grow up kind of thing, which I did want to be a teacher. Um, but you know, they got me really seriously thinking and thinking about missions too. And, um, you know, one of those, one of the things about that time, because I wanted to be a school teacher and I'm not sure if this was something that Bud or Dick or any of the other people there put in my mind or what, but I kind of got it into my mind that I wanted to be a teacher at Faith Academy in the Philippines, which I never did. Um, and actually a friend of mine from college is the principal or whatever the head person there is um, now. And he went to Faith Academy, so it makes sense. Um, but the, it's a missionary, it's a school for missionary kids in the Philippines and it's a boarding school. So missionaries from all, that are all over Asia send their kids there and I just you know I wanted to teach there or be a dorm parent or something you know I don't know I, I think I changed my mind on that a lot of times and I mean it was a real serious thing that I was thinking about for quite a while I never got to do it but and that is like one of the regrets of my life is that I didn't get to do that because I don't know it was just a cool thing anyway that was as a result of my dad working at OC and um, anyway eventually they moved to Santa Clara they built their own building in Santa Clara and I don't know I think I went there a couple times still but I don't know if it's just because of the new building or because I was older but I didn't you know go there as much but we still it was just really special being involved in Overseas Crusades, and I think that because my dad took that job, it allowed our whole family, um, and you know, the ki as kids in one way, and the whole family in other ways, to experience things that most people don't get to experience. You know, like my parents um, went to South America for a month because my dad needed to go visit. For his job he needed to go visit each of the missionaries in South America and he went to Asia for I think six weeks and I'm not sure where else he went uh, those are the two main places that I remember I think he went to Mexico for some time too and maybe even to South America another time um, 
you know, and so, I mean, those weren't experiences that us kids got to experience, although he was planning to take us kids on those if he had continued taking those trips, um, which he didn't, but that's okay. But still, the fact that my parents got to go to those places gave us those experiences, and it also gave my parents more of an international mindset, I guess. And, you know, that, of course, really affected us kids and our attitudes toward the world and, and stuff. And, um, you know, we would, there would be things with just the home staff and I guess I assume probably families that were home on furlough also, um, you know, like the annual Christmas party and stuff. I mean, Bud and Alice Schaefer would always sing at that. <laughs> Walking in a winter wonderland, I think. And, um, you know, just really fantastic people. Ed Murphy, which some of you, who some of you have heard of. Um, Ed Silvoso. Uh, Luis Palau, you know, he wasn't part of the home office staff, but he was, you know, part of our growing up experience. And, you know, these are people that um, just had a fantastic influence on us. People who were really, really strong men and women of faith. Just incredible men and women of faith. And those were the people that we knew just as a normal course of life. You know, to us, they weren't anybody special. I mean, they were special, you know, like your grandparents are special or your aunts and uncles are special, but they weren't you know, we didn't realize that these were like, you know, leaders in the Christian community or that they would be or anything like that. They were just normal people to us, but they were people who influenced us in just a fantastic way. And every summer, Overseas Crusades would have this summer missions camp where missionaries that were home on furlough, and I don't know, I think maybe some of them came home specifically for this, I'm not sure. Because um, some of them brought, you know, nationals from the countries that they were in. Um, you know, and they came and they spoke there. And so we got to hear them speak. And we also got to do really fun things at camp. And, um, you know, again, it just, it gave us the opportunity to be influenced by people that were spiritual giants. I mean, just people that you don't get to be around with every day but for us it was almost an everyday experience it was just like something that you didn't really I mean I didn't think anything odd of it or special um, I mean now it's like gosh looking back if I had it to do over again if I knew who I was talking to I would have totally I wish that I had um, spent a lot more time and paid a lot more attention. I did pay a lot of attention. I did allow them to influence me because I, I just loved those people. But I would have, I wish that I had known and been able to take advantage of it a lot more because these were just really fantastic people. And that's, you know, my dad is the kind of person who, it's really easy for him to get to know people. Um, you know, like if you meet somebody, they're immediately a friend. And, you know, he, he doesn't have any problem calling people and say, hey, we're gonna be in your area, can we spend the night or something like that? Um, or you wanna go out to dinner or something like that. And I feel very uncomfortable doing stuff like that. Um, even if somebody says, oh gosh, I hope that you'll come visit me someday and, you know, stay at my house and stuff. I still feel very uncomfortable calling them and saying, hey, I'm going to be in the area, you know, do you still want me to stay at your house or something? I just, I'm just not like that. And um, my dad, I think both of my parents, but especially my dad, is just really um, just comfortable with people. No matter who they are, you know, no matter how important or unimportant or whatever, they're all the same. And he just gets along with people really well. And is able to become friends with people, um, which that I think I did kind of inherit from him. It's pretty easy for me to become friends with people, but, and to get really deep with people very quickly. But um, I don't know, there's just a different quality about my dad that it's hard to explain, but it's really good. 
and you know people just gravitate to that I guess um, how does that look <laughs> okay look at you guys I'm not sure if that's Micah Weathern or Benjamin but doesn't he kind of look like the owl and see the owl sitting on this thing and he's holding that thing <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> he does not look like anybody in our family oh man hey, sorry that's my alarm to go do my feedback for my classes but I already did it <laughs> so I just forgot to turn off the alarm anyway um what was i saying so yeah i mean my dad's just really neat about getting along with people and and everything and that just opened up a lot of doors for us and a lot of opportunities for us and so yeah i was really lucky growing up with him as my dad and i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i want to say about oc he left oc when i was 16 um, he intentionally worked himself out of a job there and started his own firm, his own CPA firm. <clears throat> he had been at the time while he was at OC doing taxes for missionaries um, and he continued doing taxes for missionaries when he started his firm and he specialized in missionaries, ministries, and ministers and um, which is, you know, some, they, they all have their own problems and, and different specific things with the IRS that probably most CPAs don't really understand and know. And so it was really good. And he eventually at one point was teaching seminars specifically for like the church accountants and stuff like that um, to help them in dealing properly with, with those situations. Okay, I'm going to stop now and I will start up again. I love you all. I will see you later. Bye-bye.